News Center of the South, here is today's Florida News picture. Rival Battery, exclusive maker and seller of the best battery you can buy, presents Ralph Rennick reporting the news. Last Wednesday, the Cuban Consul General in Miami was attacked in the waiting room of Miami's International Airport. A briefcase was seized at that time from Eduardo Hernandez. One man in the group ran to 36th Street holding the briefcase, jumped into a waiting car and made good his getaway. Three other men, Cuban exiles, were seized by police. Consul Hernandez has sworn out a complaint with the state attorney charging robbery and assault. Enemies of Cuban President Batista claimed the briefcase was stolen because it contained secret reports on the activities of Cuban rebels here. Police have been unable to locate the briefcase or its contents. This afternoon, a courier delivered to me the missing briefcase. It was wrapped in a department store shopping bag. The initials EDH are on the light tan leather case. Now here are the contents of a letter which accompanied this briefcase. Mr. Ralph Rennick, WTVJ, Channel 4, Miami, Florida. Dear Mr. Rennick, the sender of this briefcase is the only guilty party in this matter. I ask forgiveness of the people and authorities of Miami for my act, which was only done to save the lives of three Cuban patriots who live in Cuba and whose photographs, general description, and place where they are living and hiding in Cuba are being taken in that briefcase by the Consul Hernandez to be delivered in Havana to the assassins of the dictatorship. If I had not done what I did, today there would be three more dead patriots added to the long list of those already slain. As I did not take that briefcase for any other purpose, I am returning same to you so you can return it to the Consul Hernandez together with the $185 that he claimed it contained. It also contains intelligence information as to the movements of rebels in Miami, reports by unregistered foreign agents about Cubans in the United States, photographs of Cubans whose lives are in grave danger if they return to Cuba, but who are now saved harmless by being here under asylum. Please note that the photographs and some documents have been obtained by the Consul Hernandez from the supposed secret files of the Key West and Dade County Police Departments. I don't know the law, but how did he get them? I think this is of interest to Mr. Gerstein and the FBI. All the people of the USA are entitled to know by these proofs that Cuban Consul Hernandez is Batista Gestapo chief in Miami, a foreign agent who flaunts the law by not being registered as such with the Justice Department and whose duty is to gather information, spy, prosecute, and inform the authorities of Cuba about those patriots in the USA that are to be liquefied, or liquidated upon their return to Cuba. Truly yours, O. Ars, a Cuban who loves liberty. Well, that was the accompanying letter with the briefcase. And in the briefcase was the $185 mentioned in the letter, stuck in the side, along with some documents and photographs, a white uh, shirt. Now, six of the photographs are official Dade County Sheriff's Office mug uh, shots, not identified by name. Uh, 21 of the other uh, photographs are mug shots taken by the Key West uh, Police Department. These men allegedly were captured at Big Pine uh, Key a few months ago, caught on a boat with arms and ammunition to be used in a landing on the Cuban coast. Uh, also in the briefcase, three color photographs of a boat along with an airplane Two close-ups show the plane's tail section with a serial number of the aircraft and the American flag uh, painted uh, on the airplane. Six other photographs show four different individuals. There's a fingerprint chart of a Jose Aquieres Balat, and six other mug shots were taken by Cuban police and investigative departments. The correspondence and documents refer to a boat from Clearwater used by 30 rebels and to other matters involving the Cuban rebels in Florida. It is not known, of course, uh, what material, if any, may have been retained by the person or the persons uh, who did steal this briefcase. I asked Dade State Attorney Richard Gerstein to be at WTVJ studio at 6.30 tonight as I had some important material to turn over to him. Mr. Gerstein, I would like at this time to transfer the stolen property to you and at the same time to ask what action 
uh, if any, will be taken against the persons or person involved in this theft. Now, first, I'd like to express my sincere appreciation to you, Ralph, for your cooperation with my office. As you know, there is a case pending in the criminal court of record in which three men are charged with robbery and grand larceny as a result of the assault and the subsequent theft of this briefcase. Now, it would certainly be my suggestion to the person who delivered the briefcase to you and who wrote you the letter which you've just read that he surrender himself to the state attorney so that we can properly prosecute the case against the person responsible for the theft so that no persons will be charged with a crime who should not be charged with it and so that we can resolve this incident. I might further mention to you that we, of course, have no political interest in Cuba. We're not interested in resolving any difficulties that the present government might have or that the persons who are antagonistic to the present government might have. My only interest is in seeing that there is no violence perpetrated in Dade County. Well, the writer of the letter said it might be of interest for you to know that some uh, official Dade and Monroe County Sheriff's Department mugshots were in the briefcase. Is there anything illegal that you know about uh, possession of such pictures? Well, I certainly will be interested in uh, determining how those pictures came into the p possession of uh, the consul. Uh, if uh, he had them legally or otherwise, he might well have had them in a legal fashion. He might not have. That will certainly be looked into. I certainly want to confer uh, with the FBI in regard to this question, too. Thank you, State Attorney Gerstein. Thank you, Ralph. I'll have further comment on this in tonight's editorial. And now this report from High Volt Battery. Here's one of the most important rules for pleasant driving. The sure, quick, extra power you get from my high volt battery. Bob, let's spell it out, okay? Okay. H is for higher power. I is for immediate starts every time in any kind of weather. V is for very high voltage. O is for overall better car performance. L stands for longer life. And T stands for toughness and durability. And along with this top quality battery, you get top quality service, road service from my high volt radio dispatch trucks, and checkups from my high volt's new modern service department. And train mechanics can check your car regularly with the free battery, regulator, and generator checkup. Now remember, the high volt plant is conveniently located at 1850 Northwest 7th Avenue. And I'm open weekdays from 7.30 to 7, and Saturdays from 7.30 to 5.30. So be smart. Get the right start. At be high volt. volt. Police tonight are pushing a three-state search for two desperate criminals who escaped from Dade County's jail last night. 32-year-old Norman Makowitz, accused of killing a Bell Harbor policeman, and 40-year-old Howard Pickott, admitted rapist of a homestead girl. Two others in the jailbreak, 18-year-old Roger Wayne Carter and 27-year-old Ed Kelly, were captured at the scene. Carter is awaiting trial for the slaying of a handyman during a holdup attempt, and Kelly is a federal prisoner charged with auto theft. Police late today sped to a point some five miles north of Hialeah Gardens on Okeechobee Road in the belief they had trapped one of the escapees. Hialeah Gardens Police Sergeant Jerry Frost spotted a suspicious person along the road and fired his pistol when the man ran into the weeds. Frost called for help. Detectives from Dade Sheriff's Criminal Bureau and state police arrive and begin a search of the area. A bloodhound was brought to the scene and officers began crisscrossing a large open field and searching along a drainage canal. After two hours, Hialeah Gardens Police Lieutenant Ed Dubois spotted the man, pulled him from the brush-covered canal. These exclusive films by WTVJ newsman Bob Brumfield and George Contouris show the capture. The man is Frank Fogel. He escaped from the city stockade this morning, was not one of the two escapees wanted from last night's jailbreak. This was the scene last night, moments after the court had escaped from the 23rd floor. Two of the men were recaptured at the scene. A police cordon was thrown around the building as search parties scoured the skyscraper in a vain attempt to capture Makowitz and Peacock. Roll towels used for the final two floors to freedom, a time-tested method used by other escapees. A statewide alert now expanded to a three-state alarm brought every available law enforcement officer into action. Roadblocks on every major road leading into the city failed to yield any clues to the whereabouts of the two fugitives. Police boats were pressed into service when a person reported seeing a man climb from the river, toss a bundle of clothes on the ground, and run to a boat. Police swarmed aboard, ready to shoot if necessary. A thorough search revealed three unlocked hatches. A neighbor said the hatches were always kept locked. 
Then more reports of unidentified men lurking near the docks sent 10 squad cars and scores of men to that area, all to no avail. This is the window the men used in their getaway. They cut their way to freedom with a hacksaw. All cells in the cell block are unlocked during the evening hours. The prisoners are allowed to stroll in the block. It was during that period that the four men made their escape, using the mattress covers from all of the cells. The men lowered themselves out of the window and crawled down the side of the building. News briefs as time permits, Miami Attorney Thurman Whiteside failed to show up in Washington to testify before a House committee today. Meanwhile, President Eisenhower has sent the nomination of John Cross, a State Department communications expert, to replace Richard Mack on the FCC. That's the news. I'll be back in a moment with tonight's editorial. If they ever hear of a boat with an outboard going 1,008 hours without stopping, well, it happened in Miami just the other week for the boat show. The boat is a Mohawk, one of the many boats that use high-volt batteries as standard equipment. The motor is a 35-horsepower Evinrude, and the radio a Sentry RCA. And the battery, well, you tell them, Little High. Sure, Bob. I'm proud that my high-volt marine battery was chosen for this endurance run. It had to give the initial power for 1,008 hours, subjected to sun, rain, and salt spray. Proof that all boat owners can get more out of boating with my high volt batteries. Now, these are the batteries like the one you just saw, built and labeled marine by high volt. For any regular marine installation, inboard or outboard, make sure you originally install a high volt battery. And you boat owners will be happy to know, too, that high volt is an authorized dealer for famous silver beauty battery chargers. Either 4, 6, or 12 Ampere Home Charger will keep your battery in top condition. So for heavy duty, extra heavy duty, and marine batteries, remember... You get a better battery for less at, at High Volt in Miami. Miami. Much international intrigue connected with Cuba occurs in Miami. The latest occurrence came last Wednesday when Cuban Consul General Eduardo Hernandez was assaulted and robbed of his briefcase at Miami's airport terminal en route to boarding a plane for Cuba. Three men have been arrested in the case, released on bond. The fourth, who ran off with the briefcase, has not been caught. This afternoon, a courier delivered to me the briefcase with a letter read earlier in the program. Now, my position in this matter is not partisan to either side. Because of news interest, I showed you the disputed contents of the briefcase. Obviously, there are two sides to every war. There is a war going on in Cuba. Consul Hernandez is using his intelligence forces in Miami to obtain information on rebels here and what these rebels are up to. The rebels in Miami, on the other hand, are engaged in gathering arms, ammunition, stirring up resentment against Batista. In my opinion, the best thing for Cuba is uh, a national election. One will occur this June, though, but opponents say the election is rigged that Batista's hand-picked candidate has no bona fide opponent. Leading civic groups, along with the Catholic Church, have called upon Batista to resign and put in power a national union government, which would then call a free election. Batista, however, today, in his March 10th anniversary speech to Cuba, said the only solution lies in the June 1st election. One thing is certain, things will get worse, not better, in Cuba. General strikes and violence will spread. It seems to me the question is not so much who is right, but what is right. Batista and the rebels represent extreme opposites. Both factions should step aside and let a national union provisional government call a free election. It's imperative that peace return to our neighbor nation. Good night. May the good news be yours. Watch Ralph Rennick reporting every weeknight at this time. Tonight's program presented by High Volt Battery, exclusive maker and seller of the best battery you can buy. High Volt. Preceding news, weather and sports shows directed by Bernie Rosen and Dick Rennick.